Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at Transformers King Grimlock, issue number three. Deep within the ominous rotlands, the malevolent Red Wizard casts a dark necromantic spell, raising yet another zombie soldier for his ever-growing army. Each resurrection brings him closer to his goal of conquering Mononia, even dreaming of adding the Golden One to his ranks. In the village of Angloria, Grimlock has spent weeks transforming the villagers into a disciplined militia capable of storming the Red Wizard's castle. Announcing that they'll ride at dawn, he assures them he won't abandon those who refuse to give up. Yet doubt remains. Some villagers question if they can truly trust Grimlock, considering his past abandonments of Arco and her father, Arnak. Grimlock explains that his hatred of the Red Wizard burns too brightly, so long as his new allies refuse to surrender in the coming fight, he won't give up on them. While Grimlock rallies his troops, Arco builds herself wooden armor from a fallen woodbot, bitterly reflecting on her strained relationship with Grimlock, her father, and even the anti-sun deity she once revered. She recalls a battle at sea where her father sailed away instead of helping others fight the Golden One's dragon form. As Arco confronts one of the Golden One's Cyclop minions and draws her sword, she muses that her only regret is not realizing this truth sooner. Meanwhile, the Golden One has kept himself busy by launching another attack on Arco's home village of Valorift in the name of his deity, Soltron, unaware that his servant Clada has been watching the rampage from afar. When the Golden One returns, Clada innocently asks about his master's latest hunt, the Golden One gloats that if Arnak and his followers continue to beg Grimlock for help, then they will burn to appease the face of Soltron. By nightfall, Grimlock and his militia reach the Red Wizard's crumbling castle. Suddenly, hidden woodbots spring to life, attacking the humans as Grimlock presses forward alone. He soon faces the Red Wizard's zombie horde. Despite their numbers, the undead are no match for Grimlock's dinosaur form which tears through them with ease. Smashing through the castle doors, he confronts the Red Wizard, who futilely unleashes spells that can't penetrate Grimlock's armor. Stripping away the wizard's robe, Grimlock reveals that his enemy is actually a Quintesson in disguise. With the Quintesson mortally wounded after being cleaved apart by Grimlock's tail, the wizard explains that the blood of Soltron is the basis of all life in this strange world. As the wizard dies, he proclaims that he could have deposed the Golden One, and warns that Grimlock alone won't be enough to stop him. Having fled the destruction of their village, Arnak and a small group of Valorith villagers have followed Grimlock's army to the Rotlands, and spy on the battle. Grimlock mulls over the Quintesson's words before he returns to the castle gates, hoisting the corpse of their fallen foe as a grisly victory trophy. Grimlock recognizes Arnak amidst the crowd. Although Arnak wants to know where his daughter is, Grimlock admits that he doesn't know. With the Golden One growing ever more erratic, Arnak tells the Dinobot that they need everyone on their side. This time, however, Grimlock pledges his support. If the Golden One derives his power from Energon, then it's his problem. With that, Grimlock agrees to join forces with the people of Valorift, and far away, the Golden One welcomes an unexpected visitor to his citadel. Despite his warnings that Soltron won't forgive her transgressions, she snarls that forgiveness is for the weak. Arco has come here to learn about Mononia's true power. Now I feel like issue number three did a great job building tension as Grimlock prepares the villagers to fight against the Red Wizard. And the twist that the Red Wizard is actually a Quintesson in disguise completely caught me off guard. It was not something I expected to see at all, but I really enjoyed it. And if this series wants to continue to surprise me issue after issue, I'm going to invite it because this has been fantastic. The stakes continue to get higher issue after issue and the characters have been incredibly compelling. I was honestly worried that a crossover between fantasy and Transformers was going to feel a little bit forced, but this feels completely natural. But let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this issue. Don't forget to like this video and sub to the channel for more. And stay tuned for my breakdown and review of Transformers King Grimlock issue number four. I'll see you guys next time.